everyone, it's Mandy from Creative Matters. Lovely to see you, thank you for joining us. Today our workshop is Giant Butterflies. Isn't that beautiful? Giant Butterflies. And um, what we're going to be using today is recycled cardboard and some paper that can be big enough for you to make your two sides of your butterfly. Um, you might need some paints or some felt pens today. A ballpoint pen will be a good idea for um, making sure that you can sort of indent onto your cardboard or you can have a nice sharp pencil, will be great. Um, also, you might need um, some scissors. So that should be about it really, not too many materials today. All right, so what we're going to do is create a beautiful butterfly out of cardboard and we're thinking about the sort of maths connection today with that sort of ge geometric idea. So you can see that a butterfly is a very sort of symmetrical object. This is the halfway point down here, that's the center. And then everything on this side is mirrored or reflected onto the other side, so it's exactly the same. And so if you actually folded that in half, like this one here, you would find that it fits exactly in half. So what we're going to do today is create one of these sort of paper um, butterflies and actually you don't have to make it a butterfly, it could be a moth or a dragonfly or it could even be something like a bird, some sort of flying insect or animal would be great. Um, and because it's creative matters we're here to get creative. So you don't have to make it exactly like a picture you've seen, you don't have to make it perfectly like a monarch butterfly. You can have a beautiful flying object totally out of your imagination. So I really feel like it's a creative opportunity for you. You're going to be learning skills for getting that reflection perfect on the other side. But apart from that, really it's up to you how you create your flying insect of some sort. So feel free to get super creative. Um, this is another one I've made. It's just a slightly smaller one, but it's still kind of giant compared to how the size of the moth or the butterfly usually. So you can see that everything so far is exactly centered and symmetrical. And this is where I started. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through the idea of how you create that kind of shape so that you've got a center line and then everything on the right hand side is exactly the same as what's on the left hand side. So the best way to start is just with a piece of paper that you can easily cut and fold it exactly in half. And then we're going to just start creating on one side. So that if we, if we draw and then cut out, you'll find that the other side is exactly the same. So, it's a little bit awkward, but I'm going to just show you up here so that I can, so that you can see. Okay, so I've kind of had a little think about what sort of shapes I want. Maybe you could do a little bit of drawing first or um, Google butterflies or dragonflies or bees or flies or whatever you want to do. And so that you can have a look at some images and, um, and just get a feel for you know, some of the features. Also, sometimes it's good just to get an idea of some really cool um, designs and that sort of thing. And that might just kind of inspire you to create your own design. So maybe if you'd like to just do some drawing first and then when you've decided on your shape in pencil first i'm going to do mine in pen so you can see you're going to create the right hand side of your body so you're not actually um, creating the whole body it's just one side of it and then the wings Remember, if you're doing it in pencil first, if you make a mistake or you're not happy with it, you can just rub it out and give another go. Remember, this is going to be the right hand side of my object, my uh, butterfly. And I don't think there's a butterfly that looks exactly like this. Perhaps there's not really a flying object that has four wings, but this is my interpretation. Alright, so once you've done that, remember you've got your piece of paper folded in half. So this is your centre line. 
And we're wanting that side there on the left to go right over to this side exactly the same. So the best way to do that is to have it folded and then you cut out. Nice easy way to cut is to go all the way up. So all the way up first, like this, and then you can just cut into these little spaces instead of having to cut all the way around like that. So you're just going to cut into here. And then cut into here. Like that. And then once you've actually drawn and cut out your butterfly or your moth, you may end up deciding to just make a few little changes afterwards once you see what it looks like when you open it out. I don't feel like this has to be your final version. You can see. Like this. Back into here. Sorry, somebody was just calling me. It was my daughter. Alright, so this is a bit of a quirky little guy, isn't it? He's quite a cutie. And you can see that it's not really like a realistic butterfly, but that's absolutely fine. Alright, so then once you've done your paper version, that's exactly the same on both sides, then you take your piece of cardboard like this and it's good to have a piece of cardboard that is not too difficult to cut so something that um, is quite soft like that that can easily be cut through and then you have basically created like a stencil so this one here you decide because I've got a fold in, in this piece of cardboard I'm just going to put my fold onto that fold so that it fits really nicely and then come down, put it down on the table and just draw around the stencil so that you have your perfect shape. Okay, so I'm not going to do that, I've made another one, I'll show you instead. But you can see the idea, I've had it here and I've just drawn around the shape and then I'm going to cut that out. Alright, so this is what I did for this one here. This is my original shape, and then I cut that out like that, and added two antennae afterwards at the end, and you can see that I've taped them on. So you might like to add antennae or legs or crazy little things that are sticking out from your from your flying object. It's really up to you, and you're just using the cardboard again to create those extra parts. Okay, now the tricky part is transferring your design onto your onto your cardboard so it's not just the shape of your butterfly or your moth it's actually all this kind of stuff here all this pattern and interesting design it needs to be exactly the same on that side and sometimes it can be easy just to draw one there and draw the other one on the other side sometimes you can actually measure so you've got exactly the right spaces so you could try that if you wanted to or there's a really clever way of transferring it so it's absolutely exactly the same. And I'll just show you that. Alright, so I've got this little guy here. And you can see that I've already cut him out. And here's my paper stencil version. And now I'm just going to start with my design. So I've drawn a few things on already. And you can see it's only on one side at the moment. 
So what we can do then is take our ballpoint pen, which is a little bit sharper, or a nice sharp pencil, and you might like to draw your designs in first on your table. And then you can actually go quite hard, pushing quite hard. over your lines. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's actually made a little indentation onto the cardboard. And so then I can see my design exactly how it is, and I can draw over with pencil. Then you can put your stencil back. Make sure that it's in exactly the same spot every time you do it. Whoops, the daisies. And then again, just go over your designs. If you have a ballpoint pen, it does work with pencil. It'd be much easier for you when you're actually working down on a table. It's really tricky for me up here, but I haven't got a filmer today. And then you can see again, there's just little indentations here into the cardboard. So now I can very easily draw over those. So that means that I can quite easily draw the design onto paper and I can rub it out if I want to and make changes. Then when I'm happy, I can put the final design onto my cardboard. Okay, and if you have used felt, felt pen, it's best then to go over your felt pen lines with pencil, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so they're all gone over with pencil. And now for the tricky bit. What we're going to do is, instead of trying to draw it again perfectly on the other side here, we're going to just turn that around. So that's the great thing about reflection, it's basically going from there over to there. It's not going like this, that is translation. But this one here is a reflection, so it's going to sort of flip over just like in the mirror onto the other side. So what we do is we turn over our stencil here, and now because we've pushed so hard we can still see the, the uh, lines from the other side, which is handy. But you might like to just go over and draw them in first. Like that. And then pushing down on the table. And I'm just going to push down here for a second. and I'm not sure if you can see but there's a little bit of indentation into the cardboard and so that's why this slightly sort of soft cardboard is good because it just means that um, you can actually push in and make an indentation with your pencil if it's too hard and strong then um, possibly you wouldn't be able to get inside so now I can see the indentation and I just go over with my pencil There we go. And now I've got an exact reflection. The design on this side is exactly the same as that side. And really that's all you need to do. You can create a really massive giant one on a big, big piece of cardboard if you want to. But you have to think about the sizes of your paper, what size paper you have. And that's what's going to make your stencil. And then um, when you come to the painting and designing stage, you've got your basic um, pattern and your little sort of designs on each side but then you can go once you start painting to make it even more detailed so I've got that lovely design there and then I've started painting so when I had the design with pencil I then went over with a vivid marker and you can see that then I'm coming back once I've done them vivid to do the, um, the paint so this is a pink that I made out of red and white and then you can see just using black vivid 
I have um, added really tiny dots. So sometimes you can add a little extra pattern and, and super great detail that's not actually been reflected over, you're just kind of adding. And it ends up roughly looking about the same. All right, so then you can add on your other little extra parts like I showed you. And then if you want to have it so that it feels like it can almost fly, like this, and you could actually hang it from the ceiling or you could attach it to a wall, put a piece of um, cotton across from one wing to the other and you could have it coming out from the wall, it would look amazing. The best way to do that, if you want it to be bending slightly, is to what we call score using some scissors. So it's good to uh, draw the line that you want to score first and then maybe using a ruler score and when you're scoring you're actually just going halfway through the cardboard you're not cutting through so you can kind of see a little bit of the line but I haven't gone all the way through the cardboard and then I'm going to go down the middle of this part here and then when you score you're just taking off that first half of the cardboard so you can bend it but it's not actually going to snap off pretty cool see there that becomes a little bit more sort of 3d and then it's got a little bit more of a interesting flying shape rather than just being completely flat like, like that so you can see when you can bend it it just has a little bit more of a bird-like feel or a, um, a flying object butterfly feel okay um, and I just wanted to show you two one quickly one thing quickly if you're using brown cardboard like this, you might like to do a, um, a white coat first and then do your transferring details across. It's really nice surface to work straight onto white. So you'll see here I did put white underneath first and then on this part here I didn't. So you can actually put your colour straight onto the brown depending on what sort of effect you want or you might find that some of your paint is on the brown and some of it's on white, it's up to you. All right, so I hope you enjoy yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. And um, again, if you can send me images, we can put them up on the website in the art gallery, and that would be amazing. Great to see you all. Have a fantastic, fun, creative time. See you later. Bye.